Two mega pops is an achievement in Balloons Tower Defense 6 where a single tower throughout a chimps game needs to get 2 million or more pops throughout the entire run and today we're going to be doing this with the aircraft carrier paired with hot shots. I need that early lead popping power so for those of you who are going to comment below well actually if you just stick with grape shots you'll be able to get the benefits of sharpening stone well I would rather have it so that I can actually pop leads early on rather than rely on a gimmick like that so there we go and yeah this is how things are going to go from here on out in this little game here. Darts all the way, followed up by little planes. And already we're failing right off the get-go. So we either have to go with last or strong for this case so that we can actually either pop as many as we can or slow down the frontmost ones if they are the strongest ones. But unfortunately, it seems like this is going to be a double-edged sword strategy. And apologies for that. There we go, that's much better. Let's go with grape shots, and then we've got much more means to be able to pop balloons with. Not just in a straight line, but in some arcs as well. But then again, they are straight lines, but they are, well, there's five projectiles rather than one. We can put Geraldo down for this round, which is good. It means that soon we will get stuff like Jerry's Fire and Sharpening Stone. Stuff that will really help us out here. This is something that will make some people cringe, but I'm doing it anyways because I like being able to pop leads, for goodness sakes. It does make it so that it turns the grape from a sharp projectile to a fire projectile, but that is something in which I am going to do anyways. Put some nails at the end of the road here so that we can count around 24's single camo balloon, and next we're going to go with a... No, we're going to go with, with Destroyer now, because Destroyer is going to make our attacks super duper fast, like Sonic the Wedgehog fast. Okay, so purple is going to be a little bit of an issue. I wish we can actually pop those purples with our darts. Very good. So I think if we didn't have hot shots, the purple balloons would be less of an issue there. Oh, it's looking a little tight for round 27, but I believe we have it in the back. Yes. And now to those who hate hot shots, this is why I selected hot shots. Also, let's get destroyer while we're at it. I always think the journey is more important than the start point and the destination. And if the middle point, the journey, is something which you cannot travel on because it has an obstacle in the way in which you cannot overcome. So let's say with this, with leads, for example, if we cannot pop leads, then we cannot traverse through the journey. And part of this journey requires being able to pop leads. And if we cannot do that, then obviously we cannot progress. So that is why we did that. So this village is now in the range of our destroyer here, which is lovely. We're going to get jungle drums soon. We've got ourselves invisibility potion on our destroyer. Going to get jungle drums soon so we can get that nice, sweet attack bonus. Go up to radar scanner so that we no longer need to rely on invisibility potions. Although we could have used it on something else, like a glue gunner. I think this time around I'm not going to rely on primary training or primary mentoring for our glue gunners. Because I don't think we're going to have the money required in order to pull that off. But what we will do is a homeland defense to buff both our planes and the ship itself and there it goes round 39 so round 40 is going to present to us with well this behemoth here but no problem because we have that and i've already done the destroyer but it's on logs but park path is a a map which i've not done a mega pops on and b this is a harder map although i don't think necessarily it's harder for this particular like my boat because it does very well on this map anyways, because you can literally park the boat right in the center of the map, and if you have enough range, you can literally cover the, in well, 95% of a track here. This little bit here, and this little bit at the end here, can't cover, but the rest of it, you can. It's an almost global tower, essentially. Now that we do have MIB, Hot Shots is going to be a little bit of a hindrance towards that. Although I always like the aspect of fire with my 
fire power. <laughs> Get it? Okay, I'll leave. The only downside to glue gunner is that it makes leads horribly slow. <laughs> if it's like, come on, hurry up, I wanna pop you already before they're impending doom. Moab glue, we're just gonna keep it at bigger globs for the moment so that we can stick two Moabs at a time. But nothing else at this given point in time when it comes to this particular glue gunner. We will get the other path of the glue gunner though. But we're only going to get it to glue strike rather than glue storm. I need that plus two damage. But I don't need it all the time. Oh, this is looking a little tight here. They're making their way towards this inner circle here. But they're not going to get past our defenses that likely. Glue hose. Just keep sticking them balloons. Thank you very much. Here we go, round 50. Another Moab, just like with round 40, but with some added stuff. Like red balloons. For some odd reason. Oh, and another Moab as well. How fascinating. And here we have a final upgrade to this boat. Now, we have both darts and grapes for our little planes here, which is lovely. If you're wondering why I'm not sounding as chipper today or sounding as positive or upbeat, there is a reason why. And it's kind of a little bit of a dull thing to talk about, but I kind of need to get this off my chest because it's been, it's been with me for a little bit of time, but I really need to get it off my chest. And I think this is something that every content creator at some point has kind of thought about. And it's the topic of expectations. At some point, by other people, you are expected to know something. You're expected to do something. You are expected to preemptively do something or know something before that thing even comes to pass. So let's say, for example, this game, for example. I'm somehow expected to know that Hot Shots is a nerf to Grape Shots, even though this can pop lead so innately i would think that getting hot shots is a buff but i've been told by other people that hot shots is a nerf in some ways or for the fact that putting grapes on a plane which turns it from not just darts firing at balloons but darts and grapes firing at balloons is somehow a nerf i don't know why that is the case i've been giving the plane more means of attacking is a good idea but here we go i'm not an expert at the game i don't call myself like a same a self-proclaimed elitist at the game or anything like that but what i do find really annoying is that you are expected to know things about a particular scenario before you are even aware of that thing's present so you are expected to know a you are expected to know b you are expected to know c you are expected to know something before you are even aware of that thing's existence presence or anything along those lines you expect to know this and if you don't know that then you are dumb you are horrible and you are deserving of the um the word that rhymes with uh, uh, I was about to say death as in like D-E-A-F, but that's just kind of like the same pronunciation as D-E-A-T-H. Like some people honestly have that kind of mindset or thought process when someone else doesn't know something in which you know. And I hate expectations of having to know something before I even become aware of that thing's presence. I'm expected to know A. I'm expected to know B. I'm expected to know absolutely every single fragment of this game, even before I even know that that thing or that property is even a thing in the first place. I am no wiki and I am no saint, but what I am is honest and I hate it when people believe I should know something before I even know that that something is even there to begin with. And I'm sure that a lot of content creators think of this as well when they go into a scenario, especially for like their first few times. And it's like, well, well, that sucks because obviously I've entered a community in which is very, very elitist and gated towards those that don't know that particular thing. And that's something I hate. And I think that every community should at some point realize that 
they are not the only ones in the community. There are others like them, but unfortunately, they don't see it like that. You are expected to know that this is an incredibly powerful tower that can solo every single round in a chimps game without support. You are expected to know that a base tower is something which is unupgraded when, according to the index of this particular game by the community, a base tower is something that ends with tier 2 upgrades or below. You can have tier 0, which is unupgraded, tier 1, or tier 2, and or tier 2. You can have a 2-1, a 1-2, or a 0, zero, zero, zero. anything along those lines. But what I dislike about people sometimes is that you are expected to know something before you are even becoming aware of it. I go by what other people state and what other people state. They are people that have been around the community for years and they all come to a unified opinion that a base tower is something that is either a tier 0, a tier 1 or a tier 2 tower. That is probably the most recent example of pre-expectations or something that I should have just been aware of before I even came to realization that that term is even a thing. I've heard of base, but I haven't fully tapped into what it actually was. And it is tier zero to tier two. But people still say, um, actually, you shouldn't upgrade it because then it's not a base tower. But at the end of the day, does it even matter what something is or is not when it comes to a game? At the end of the day, the most important thing I think about a game is enjoying it. If you don't enjoy something, then it's either A, something work related because you have to do it so that you can put food on the table. Or if it's leisurely and you don't want to do it, then you should not be forced to do it because others believe that you should know what that something is before you're even aware of what that something is and its properties. And I've just mucked up, haven't I? Um, have I? Have I? <laughs> okay, I... Oh, oh, I almost mucked up there. So, yeah, people will probably say, well, actually, if you save call to arms then that round would not be such a, such of a struggle. And I'd say I agree, but I thought I needed it for the rest of round 75 because of those grouped up BFBs. At the end of the day, it is genuinely impossible to please everyone. That you can always please somebody, or even like a large proportion of people. And those are the people that I strive to continuously create content for outside of most importantly my enjoyment of the game and as long as my enjoyment of the game is there then that will always be paramount first and foremost i don't go for the ogs i don't go for the achievements or the temporary moments of fame on reddit or anything like that or on youtube i don't go for that sort of stuff i just like playing this game because I enjoy what it gives to people. It is essentially a gigantic sandbox. You can do whatever you like within that sandbox. And regardless of how people critique you or wish that you would not exist, then that is something in which is up to you as the interpreter of that information to say either one or two things, or one of three things actually. Number one, you review it in a positive light. Number two, you defy it. Or number three, you just ignore it outright. And a lot of things I have to just simply ignore outright because there's nothing really to respond to. There's nothing professional or nice with how some people comment on others on the internet. Which is really sad, really. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, you wouldn't act like that in the real world you would <laughs> you would wuss out actually i would think with some people because they're keyboard warriors and they think they know this they think they know that they think they know absolutely everything 
They know where you live. <laughs> they know your, the credit card details on your mother's credit card and all that jazz. All of that is just simply intimidation tactics to taunt you and stuff like that. If somebody's just like that towards you, just ignore them. They don't. They just want to use that as intimidation tactics to intimidate you, to annoy you, to belittle you, to make themselves think that they are bigger than you. And I'm always going to say this. I do not like elitists. I don't like people that think that they are gods among others because they've discovered this thing or they've discovered that thing i am always of the protector of equal acceptance into a community if you have the intentions of being nice to others without being an absolute asshole to others and if you are falling into that category of being an absolute asshole to others then you don't deserve the accomplishments that you've made throughout that game because you let that skill set, that mindset to, de sorry, to not to, to defy, to define your place within a community. And the only kind of people that will follow you are those that believe that you are gods. People that have like an automaton mindset that only sees you for a set of lines put to you on a bit of HTML code on a website that says this person has done this and therefore they should be praised regardless of what things they have done. Now I just realized we've got more than enough money now if I can find my mouse for Homeland Defense. That's the kind of thing that happens and this is a very powerful tower. I'm not gonna lie on this map this is very powerful. Like I said earlier I know I've done destroyer on logs but honestly, destroy is very powerful in its own right. So our next stage in this particular game, sorry for kind of souring the experience there, but there are things I, like, I need to talk about, not because I like to talk about it, but I feel like I need to get it off my chest. I need to vent. Venting in some ways is healthy because it's like a sponge that can only absorb so much water. And once that water cannot be absorbed anymore, that water has to go somewhere. It's like a leak. You have to enable that water to go somewhere or else the dam will burst. Homeland defense. Oh, look at all those projectiles. That's just wonderful. Also, the fire and nax bonus pops as well. How is that a debuff? I don't understand some people's mindset, honestly. But I'm sure there is a reason behind it. And I'm all for listening to stuff as long as it is within reason. I don't like elit elitists in a way that say, well, this is this thing because that is the way that I portray it as that. Rather than, I don't know, explaining why it's a debuff or explaining why it's worse to have something like fire on a grape. <laughs> like, this whole kind of scenario thing is warped in its own way. Like, we're playing a game here. Like, and you're watching as well. We're playing a game here where we are literally throwing different kinds of projectiles from a monkey towards balloons of multitude different kinds. And actually, somebody explained to me that lead balloons or metal balloons are an actual thing. I was like, that's actually kind of fascinating. I can't remember who commented or anything like that, but I definitely remember someone saying that. It's like, how can something so heavy be able to make something float and it's kind of like the concept of how can bees fly when they are such tiny bodies and large sorry yeah no such large bodies and tiny wings i said them in, in the inverse order there uh need oh i need another sabo that's what i need i need that fourth one down also somebody said that three sabos are more than enough yeah yeah, try surviving 25% without that half speed on all balloons, for goodness sakes. And it's not always half of them. It's like, it's only the ones which are not popped, really. Another glue strike, another sabo. So yeah, I think this video, aside from the beginning portion of this game, is going to be largely unedited because of the fact that I was talking about that sort of thing. 
I don't know a lot of the time I've been repeating words, but honestly, I feel like sometimes repetition is a way to stick knowledge into um, into the forefront of a conversation. Sometimes, <laughs> with enough projectiles, the balloons will pop. And in other cases, we need enough time to talk about something before people will say, well, actually, I get what he's trying to talk about here. Even though, even though I don't want people to always agree with what I say, I think the most important thing is to be able to understand one's perspective, even if you don't agree with it. And that actually builds a healthy relationship in a community. Is that we can all have different opinions on something, but as long as we're not trying to strangle each other's throats, then that builds a he healthy environment for everyone to enjoy. Uh, come on, come on, we can do this. We can definitely do it. So, I'm thinking of Relentless Glue now. We really need that extra little bit there. Let's see. Do that. Homeland defense. Providing us with all of that juicy attack rate bonus. And PS bonus as well. Oh, uh, actually, um, I know why I lost to that one. Because I did not deploy the Sabo enough on that round. Things are going much better this time. Also, remember to put Jerry's fire and sharpening stone on. Which will... You know, help us out in some way, shape, or form. You know, increase damage and pierce from our darts. I know darts are not our best projectile, but every little bit helps. Thank you very much. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I was going to say all of the DTs on the field, but the glue strike didn't manage to get one of them, which was at the very back here, which is why that took a little few more projectiles to pop it. Can we do this or can we not do this? That is the question I would like to save Homeland Defense for the next round. Please? Okay, I'm just going to use another Sabo here. There we go. Exactly, Geraldo. That's just what we needed. I have an idea of what I want to do next, but I don't want to deploy it down before we are absolutely certain that it will work for around 100. I'm debating either an absolute zero or an overclock engineer simply because of the fact that i would like to increase the attack rate even more from our non-plane attacks because when you put overclock on an aircraft carrier it only increases the fire rate of the projectiles that fire out of a boat itself it doesn't increase the attack rate from the planes that's only something that you could do with let's say a homeland defense for example or a call to arms or anything along those lines because this is global whereas overclock is selective but also it is always op to use in these kind of scenarios but this is probably one of the fewest towers where you don't require overclock to get the most amount of your tower because a lot of the pops off from like sub towers Okay, round 98. This is the big round of do or don't. Oh, I really need Homeland Defense to come back up, please, because they're making their way to the very end of the track. No, no. Put the Homeland Defense up, please. Our reliance on Homeland Defense is also our greatest weakness here, to be honest. Like, it's brilliant, but it's also our greatest weakness. How on earth are you able to pop them back here, Geraldo? I did not say you can attack ZMGs like that. Thank you very much. Keep on going. Homeland Deep. Whoa. I don't know why the game just lags well. I think it's Relentless Glue and the stuns it because I'm it sometimes commits. Sometimes that is a thing with Relentless Glue. It can kind of lag the game a little bit regardless of your PC spill. We're making my way very far to the end here. Oh, no, no, we've run out of Homeland um, Defense. <laughs> Don't get through. Oh, that was so close. Okay, we can put down two more of these. Thank you very much. We'll put them down over here. Put that there. Yeah, let's use Homeland Defense as early as possible so we can get these DDTs popped as early as possible. I'm hoping we will have a little bit of... I wonder if we can actually do that without using Homeland Defense. So I'd like to save that for around 100. I wonder, I know why, because we gave Geraldo the invisibility potion so that we can increase the range of these creepy idols, that's why. That's why Geraldo is able to get these 2,000 pops. 
Well, that's no good. I was kind of hoping for 2,040,000. Well, I guess my own stupidity failed me there. Okay, so, test one. We're going to try and do an overclock here. This is what the kind of thing that I want to do here, so that we can increase the fire rate from our... Oh my god, look at that! <laughs> look at the amount of grapes fired out of that thing! That's brilliant! Okay, another glue strike. We've still got another 14k. Does it matter what we do with it, really? I don't, think, I don't even know why I use that, because that's useless on that particular scenario. Oh, Geraldo, why do you have to fire? I'm going to fire you out of a cannon ship. Not right now, though. It's only after this scenario. Hmm, Homeland Defense. Yes, please. And that, folks, is game. Uh, I had a test when we had 2,042,000 pops. Not on all pops, but it was just extremely close. But it was because of the fact I had invisibility potion on Geraldo, which is why I lost out on a near 3,000 worth of pops. But thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're in, well, well, at least tolerated my rant there about pre-expectations and pre-cognitiveness within the, any kind of community, actually. But mainly towards, like, people who have some hours within this game and people expect them to just know absolutely everything without being told and then if you are having to be told then yeah that's that so yeah folks thank you all so much for watching and let me know what other two mega parts or other videos you like to see me perform on the channel so there we go thank you all so much for watching i am hoping to get a mega pops on at least one of every beginner map before the end of 2023. So I've yet to do one on In the Loop, Tree Stump. Done one on one, two, three, I believe. One, two, three. Uh, still up to debate with Scrapyard if I've done one on that or not. Skates, I've yet to do one. Done one on Park Path now. Alpine Run, I haven't done. And uh, that's it, actually. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, everybody.